are expected to go on strike for part of the school day this coming Friday to protest about climate change because they think it's not being taken seriously enough. The mass walkout called UK Youth Strike for Climate currently has students in 38 cities and towns across the country planning to join them on Friday's protest. The National Association of Head Teachers says it is in favour of the strikes, saying... When you get older, pupils making an informed decision, that kind of thing needs to be implauded. Finlay Pringle is 11 and is striking on Friday. I've been speaking to him before his bedtime, along with his dad, Jeff, who told me why Finlay has decided to take action. He's very passionate about uh, the marine environment. He's, he's actually a shark ambassador, and he's very concerned about um, the effect that the climate change and climate warming is having on the marine environment. So him and a couple of his, his sister and his, um, one of his friends at school decided that uh, they would join in the climate strike. They've been watching it develop on the uh, continent and in Europe, and uh, they decided that it was such an important issue that they would uh, start striking themselves. So they started just before Christmas, um, about the 14th of December they started, and next week is the main UK strike and that'll be their ninth strike that they've done. So they've been out every Friday since the 14th of December. And Finlay, I know you're listening now. Good, good evening to you, Finlay. Hello. Hello. Tell me why you feel strongly about this. Well, I feel like sometimes the politicians aren't listening to highly educated people. So my view on it is, why should I be in school being educated? when highly educated people aren't being listened to, as well as what's the point of learning for a future if there isn't going to be a future. My goodness, you, you sound like a smart young man. So what are they not listening to? What's the message they should be hearing, Finlay? The message that they should be listening to are scientists is that we need action now. We need to stop talking and start doing something, because otherwise it's going to be too late. Doing what, though? Well, um... We have to stop the carbon dioxide levels increasing. And why do you... And we need people to agree to the Paris Agreement to um, keep the global warming from going above 1.5 degrees, as the well as we need to people to eat less meat and reduce the fossil use, use and get more renewable energies and plant more trees and... The Paris yeah. Agreement? You know what the Paris Agreement is, do you? Yes. At it's 11 true. years of age? Yeah. Where did you learn about that? Uh, did you learn about that oh, in school? Um, I was at when I was on um, Facebook. Okay. And look, I, I eat a lot of meat, Finlay, and I hear a lot of people telling me that I'm doing harm to the environment. What am I doing? Um, well, the problem is, is with um, when people make massive factory farms for the meat that people eat. Is it produces so much methane gas that it's actually breaking a massive hole in the in the atmosphere? You've got a, a smart young son here, Jeff. Yeah, I mean he's um, it's something he's he's very passionate about because he, he's obviously into a lot of marine wildlife and things. He's a shark ambassador for um, um, Sea Shepherd Global Conservation, and uh, he's just actually turned vegetarian himself. Uh, just just after Christmas there, because that's how serious he feels about the whole thing. And he, he likes to basically set an example to people who think you can't, can't just talk the talk, you've got to walk the walk as well, so he's become vegetarian as well. My goodness. And Finley, do you miss your meat? No, not really. Come on, you must miss a little bit now. OK, Did just in case I'm vegan, I'll say that. <laughs> Did you have turkey at Christmas? No. Well, yes. Because um, it was my New Year's resolution to be a vegetarian. And why do you feel so strongly about that, Finlay? Because I want to save the planet. And do you really think we're running out of time? Well, not yet. We're not out of time yet. If we start now, then we can still do something. And what do you say to all these older people, some of whom, ugh, they don't really care enough, and they think it's not going to make much of a difference? to them in maybe 10 years or so that everything they know will be gone possibly it'll be too late by then and then we'll be having uh, sea level rising houses will be flooded crops destroyed 
annoyed. There's more hurricanes. What are you going to do this Friday? What 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 form does the protest take? So it's when we go and stand outside our school and we just hold placards and start chanting because we want people to know what we're doing and why to spread the message so people understand what climate change is and then hopefully we want other people to take part even though it's not happened yet. And what would you say to the other kids who are thinking about striking or maybe they want to stay in school? I would say... Um, to the people who want the strike, I'd say do it. But if you're in, like, different, like, England, and it's a bit harder down there because of how it is with their teachers and stuff, you've got to try and convince them into it as well. But if you're up in Scotland, then you do it, and you just do your best. It doesn't matter where you are. You go outside your school, a government building. If you're in, like, Edinburgh, you can do it outside the parliament, anything like that. And for the people who um, want to stay in school, that's fine. They can do that if they want. But as long as the placard says march now or swim later. <laughs> do, you, do you think you might be a politician when you grow up? Uh, not sure I've planned, but possible. What do you want to be? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, sharks, probably. I mean, something to do with wildlife, it's got to be, so... And your dad was telling me you've taken a keen interest in sharks. Yes. Why? And um, because I've always loved the sea, and I actually go swimming in the sea with um, and go snorkeling. And one of those times, I saw a shark, a small dogfish, and it just re you know, I just realised how beautiful, what beautiful creatures they are. Well, you're you're lucky. Think, you're lucky, young man, aren't you? Not very many of us get to see a shark up front. Yeah, it wasn't very scary because it was like very small. But we've seen very small sharks. I've even seen three basking sharks at once at men. So not far from where I live, we still have these incredible creatures. And are they under threat as well from the environment? Yes. Unfortunately, I think it's roughly 90% of all British sharks are endangered. Really? Really. My goodness, I didn't know that. Yeah. And a hundred million, roughly, are killed every year. Seventy-three for shark fin soup. Seventy-three million shark fin soup. And to put it into perspective, um, much just say that some humans justify it by saying, oh, but they kill us. Let's just put this into perspective. Last year, five people died to sharks. Last year, seven people died to bees. So... Tell me this, do you take an interest in politics? Or is it just the environment? Like, are you, have you been watching all this Brexit malarkey play out? No. <laughs> Brexit's not my thing. But we've been, the, I'm part of a local group, and we've been doing something to do with the kelp dredging. And we went to Hollywood. Hollywood. And we just did lots of campaigning outside the building. We actually watched the decision happen. And do you think campaigning works, Finlay? Do you think yeah. if you protest and you campaign, it, it can change it, minds? It usually does, but sometimes it doesn't. But most of the time, if you keep going, it will. And you're not always going to get positive responses. But that shouldn't stop you from doing what you think is right. I think you're amazing. I don't want to patronise you, but I really do. I think you've got charisma, young man. And I'm sure you'll go very far in life if you keep up that determination. And You know what you want, don't you? You know what you want to fight for. Yep. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for talking to me tonight. Thanks, Dad. No problem. Thank you. Oh, thanks a lot. Night-night, Finlay. Night. Well, Jeremy Barnes is listening to that, a head teacher in Liverpool. Hello, Jeremy. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Hi. So you don't think these strikes are a good idea. Tell us why. Well, um... First of all, can I just say that um, I completely agree with you about Finley. What a, what a kid, you know, what, what great charisma, what great uh, passion for the environment. I just feel that schools have a wonderful role to play in being able to uh, set this agenda and drive it forward with our pupils. To separate it out like this is, is actually counterproductive. They need to be in school doing it with the teachers and with the schools. But, but what's... Well, what's wrong with the kids getting together and campaigning for something important to them? Why do they need adults? They 
don't need adults to start their ideas and get them underway, but the best, one of the best places for them to be able to develop those ideas is in a school. If I can give you an example, in, in my school at the moment, uh, a group of pupils have come together, they're really concerned about um, the decrease in bees, you know, and they're working. So the school's been able to link them up with Iceland Foods, who were running a big campaign, and as a result, the children are going to be able to go to the board meeting, support Iceland Foods with their campaign, and I think that just gives them a much better way of being able to present their points and get it across. Do you think there's something quite powerful about young people having the confidence to do it themselves? Yeah, completely. But that's uh, something that can be sort of fermented in the school and developed by the teachers. You know, really good teachers will do that. They'll provide that guidance. But why does it need to be developed involved. by the teachers, Jeremy? Why not let them run as well, fast as they want to run themselves? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the parents as well, of course. So you've got the parents at home, you've got the teachers in school, and I think that's a really, really winning combination. All right. Jeremy, thank you very much. Nice to talk to you tonight. And Sorry you. it's so thank short. Very much, Here's the news at 10.